we are going to test soft shackles and these are diamond knots where the bunny ears come out but david here cut them off <laughs> <laughs> so and what size is this this is a two millimeter dyneema that i make little soft shackles out of and this is three mil well, uh, eighth inch eighth inch freedom units <laughs> so stay tuned and we will break test these and dive into some of the details Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks, and this is... David Liebenberg. And he sails. You sail a lot. A lot, a lot. Yeah, okay. As a Highliner, I'm excited about this because most of the stuff in our sport stole the technology from sailing, including soft shackles. And as a guy who loves soft shackles way too much, I've never actually used or tested on this channel diamond knots. We have tested button knots. They're all gonna be in the descriptions, our soft shackle playlist, lots and lots of stuff, but we're gonna do a lot more because a lot of people have requested things. So. What is your concern with this soft shackle? A few things. One, making sure the tails don't actually get sucked through the knot and have the knot fall apart. Yeah. I pre-tension these with my hand. I didn't use a hydraulic or a just winch. Just like this? J just like that. And then cut off the tail. And then cut off the tails, about a half inch of tail off, and then burn the rest down. Okay. And sort of made a, ca um, a cap with the melted Dyneema. Yeah, I didn't even know you could melted enough to do that. We just put out a Sharpie video with Brent Roth and he did um, super glue on top and kind of left his bunny ears up. But I like this look if it doesn't, you know, suck the tails through and the whole <laughs> thing falls apart. So the theoretical strength of this from our Highline research, which is so extensive, uh, is you get about 178%, so precise, 178% of the strength of a diamond knot. Whereas a button knot takes those two tails and puts them back down and then you splice that tail through the body of this, which makes the throat that this noose is going around twice as big, and that bend radius is where they it breaks. And so you actually get less strength. But if you look here, you have two cords going around twice. That should in theory be four times the strength of the actual one cord times 50% less because you used it. <laughs> That's how ropes are. Uh, but everything comes down to that single point. And that is where I think it's going to break. And in this episode would be rad if the tail is pulled through. <laughs> and we can tie a few others where I don't uh, don't set them in quite as much and set them in more and yeah. see if that makes any so, difference. So uh, after we test these, we'll possibly, uh, if you see in the timestamps below, show you how to tie this so we don't leave you hanging. Let's break some stuff. Let's break some stuff. Oh, that's so interesting. <laughs> One of my tails pulled through. Oh, snap. Right? <laughs> I don't know. Hold on. Wait, let's, no. let's back it off. Oh, no, no. It was at the noose. Okay. Wait, what did happen? I think I think I broke. We either popped through or it broke in the knot because my melted dynema okay, is so still there. so this is the noose. The noose is still intact. Oh, snap. Ah, uh, literally... Wow, this this is really hard to test tiny stuff. Let's see if you're not your next one. So what was the force? Seven point five kilonewtons are almost you know like eighteen hundred pounds ish. So what's it rated for? Eight hundred and ninety pounds. We're having way too much fun over here nerding out on this. What do you think about splicing just straight in line to see what the actual breaking strength of this is? Like an eye splice. Just an ice eye to eye splice. Yeah. And then we'll we'll finish breaking these other two. Find out if the knots pull through and then find out what the actual strength is. And see how close it is to, to see if we're actually, because we don't know if 7.5 really is good. I don't know. <laughs> that is really scary to stand next to it. <laughs> yep, this one broke at the news. This one broke properly. And ironically, it broke lower. What happened? To oh, dude! My knot came Your out. Your knot came undone. <laughs> Three different ways to break. I, I've never seen soft shackles break this many different ways. Wow. And the noose is pulled in on itself, and it, oh, it's yep. all the scrunch, scrunched up on itself right there as well. Wow. Yeah, I mean, six, six and a half to seven and a half really is, I don't know, but it's all relative to the strength of what you're doing right there. Yeah, exactly. Cool. I guess... Another question is, 
What would a button knot look like in this? Oh! oh. <laughs> do we go down the rabbit trails? Before we break eye to eye, where do you think it's going to break? Either right here, which is where the end of the taper is. Okay. Or right there on this side, because the loop is smaller. Um, yeah, it's been... And it's, it's less, less parallel, just like a, a climbing anchor. Yes. <laughs> okay, that was not too bad. It broke in the middle. 3.6 kilonewtons. Hey, it broke on the small side, yeah. Do some math in your head. We got six and a half to seven and a half, and it breaks straight three and a half. So 50%, twice as strong. 50% and it Four was... strands times 50%. That's pretty much what it came out to. 3.95 kilonewtons is the stated MBS, if we're reading that label correctly. And we've got 3.6. So anytime you use anything, <laughs> you're gonna get less. It makes it weaker. But, and... but splicing, the 12 braid stuff, the hollow braid stuff that, that all this is based off of, is uh, supposed to retain, what, 90%? 90% when you taper When you do it right, yeah, when you do it right. So let's go back to do the uh, one more test. You want to test it with the... The, the tails not snipped too low because two of our tests were a failure because the... The knot fell apart. The so knot fell apart. I've set these in by hand, very similar, but we'll just leave the tails as is. We'll put a mark on these things so we know how much they get sucked in because you only pull this by your by your hands. Yeah. Okay. What? 5.05? <laughs> and what happened? It still has load on it. Well, yeah, I guess it does. Here, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. no, it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> That's the news. That used, you know, it used to be the news. <laughs> so it broke in the knot this time. Okay. That's part of the, that's one part of the knot. This must be multiple pieces of rope. No, that's one. Did your knot come undone? Yes, but it also broke in the knot. Oh, once it broke, it come un came, came undone. Came undone. But I don't see where the knot was tied in this piece because it, it looks... Here's the, this black mark was one inch above the diamond knot. This is really hard on these small samples. So this, this rope straightened out, and I think the knot slid off of this because this is very stiff. This was loaded well, I the think, entire way of the tail. And it's probably because it, it's getting pulled through a bend, like the way this pinched it. It, it just... Yeah, I did that yeah. because uh, once one side comes undone, the whole thing then, falls apart. Yeah, it broke there, and then it slid. The knot is very dependent on both <laughs> sides being there. <laughs> and that is... Wow, but the variation in the samples are are a lot. 5 to 7.5, that's a lot. It's a huge difference. Yeah. For the same knot. I'm going to show you how to tie a diamond knot. And then we'll test it one more time. <laughs> and then we'll test it one more time. All, All right, right, here we go. So making the noose right now, getting through the middle of the rope. We have our noose. Okay. Tie the knot about there. A twist. Come up. Tail goes through that loop. You end up with a little swirly thing in the middle. So halfway through tying the knot, that's what your knot should look like. And then each tail goes around a leg and up through the middle. Same thing with this tail around that leg and up through the middle. And, and then and there's a, a little bit of dressing left. Wow, that is easier than the button knot. But I'm sure I would even have to watch this video 10 times before I could do that. <laughs> and you have your soft shackle. Cool, all right. So several ways to set the knot is to take you know, these tails or even put a winch on a knot you set here and you pull it. Uh, things we've done in our Highline communities, we put it like in a smaller quick link than it fits and then it will pull that. Um, but I have actually found if you just do it normal and 
it ends up pulling all four strands. So instead of using a quick link to pull that, you basically just do this and it does the same thing. I don't really feel like this part, this side's necessary. So what we're gonna do is test it my way. And um, one of these strands is tighter than the other. And I think that's going to self adjust when the knot adjusts and you end up getting this perfect noose. So I'm gonna take it up to one kilonewton, relax it, two, relax and break. Okay, pretension is done, let's go. Oh, wow. So it rolled, I could see the noose kind of roll over the top and then break. And then... <laughs> it's alive. <laughs> the, it, that's the noose. So I think it broke at the knot again. Yep. The noose rolled on itself. I wonder if this is just because it's such a small diameter or if it's part of the, how the diamond knot happens. I don't know, let's try three mil. All right. Test number one of the eighth inch. So that's dramatically different. I smell it. Don't look at the dyno. How much force do you think that was? Because we were getting five, six, and seven on the two mil. 15, 18, 21. 21. That broke like normal. That's a good thing. And that's amazing because your tails, you have, like, don't exist. Yeah. They didn't pull through. They, they just melted on top, create a little ca hard cap to try to keep them from getting sucked into the knot. All right, detective. What happened to this guy? <laughs> it ah, it was your knot. Broke at the knot. And the noose is somewhere there. That's still warm. Yep. There's yeah, some, it gets pretty warm. There's some strands that are broken at the noose. Huh. But it broke at the knot. Would you like to know why you should lock your carabiners? <laughs> this is supposed to be attached to this side but because we're you know wanting to go get some tacos this opened at least this is a little bit more identifiable yeah i think it's breaking right where i'm melting mm. right right where the end of the dyneema is melting there's little you're actually getting less height because you're compromising the top the, the essentially strength yeah of the dyneema yeah but you were saying why you like this method yeah it's a little hard to, to show now, but basically it's a smoother knot, so it's easier to put the noose over the top of because sometimes when we're sailing, obviously on the water, and you can be upside down, it can be dark, not easy to do. S sometimes it, this is getting pulled really tight, so you want as little noose open as possible and it to be able to slide right on, and you don't want a big long tail sticking out that you have to pass through as one, one more step in the process. Makes sense. I should introduce you to button knots. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I'm gonna just keep plugging those. <laughs> like the video if you get the reference, guys. All right, for you guys, we're gonna find out what straight in line is. God, that sounds so strong. <laughs> now, this is a fun fact. There's always one strand out of the 12 that stays, or is that two strands? Um, that doesn't break. But then if I push the button, it just comes apart. The soft shackles were, were 21. 21, 22? Yeah. And this was 12, so. Half. Half or double, depends how you look at it. <laughs> All right, that's it. I want tacos. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is, we're, I'm actually really curious if button nuts would perform better and this would be the time to test them. So we're going to just tie them while we're eating tacos and then and then break test them. See you in a few minutes. Those were some yummy tacos. We have a button knot, the kind you always see on this channel. And now we are going to test this. Uh, this you said was eighth inch? Eighth inch. So uh, freedom units, a little bit bigger than three mil. And then we'll do the small one, depending how this goes. And going. There is a chance we tied that wrong. <laughs> okay, so apparently you have to tie your soft shackles correctly because that's not very strong. Wow, well that is a question that we've been asked many times on this channel. Okay, in my defense, I cheated on myself and used animated knots to tie the button knot. But then we went to this video right here and got it right this time. So 
Let's test this new and improved correctly tied button knot. Shit, that was tied right. <laughs> My button knot has been redeemed. I was like, wait, his diamond knot's not stronger than my button knot. <laughs> yeah, look how hard that head gets. It's yeah. just rock, rock hard. 27.7 kilonewtons. I think we we're getting what, 21, 20, 22? Yeah, 21, 22. So basically, if you just watch that video we made, uh, Matt Stoling tying the button knot, then you can get a much better soft shackle with the top not having tails. Are you a believer? Uh I gotta learn how to tie that knot. <laughs> <laughs> They're not shitting on the diamond knot, I'm just saying. <laughs> two mil? Should we do the two mil? Let's do the two we mil. We already, yeah, let's do it. Two mil button knot. Huh. Where's it at? <laughs> we'll never find a gray soft shackle down <laughs> Nah, it's gotta be around here somewhere. What do we think of the result? 9.4. I don't even remember what, what we were, were the getting. Other one? Six, six, five, six, seven. Five to seven, yeah. Oh, is that 20% stronger than Just yours? About. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> oh, man. Want to see soft loops embedded into a boat? Oh, I guess you're going to have to subscribe because that's the next thing we're going to film. Thanks for watching. Click the thing that looks like this. Cheers.